So whenever I post a picture or video of some of the flags I make, somebody always messages me and asks for the file. Um, I've always told them no, and it's not because I don't want people to be able to make the stuff I make. It's just that I see it as a great learning opportunity to learn the software um, that you're working with. Um, I use Carbide Create. This video is going to show how to make a flag in Carbide Create. And the one that we're going to make today is going to be the Marine Corps uh, Eagle Globe and Anchor. Um, I'm going to show you where to find the images. I'm going to show you how to put them together and design your flag. Um, I'm going to show you the different bits that I use and how they're programmed in there with the feeds and speeds. And then we're going to go over how to make your own toolpaths. So this should cover everything that you need to know on how to design the file that you'll need to make one of these flags. All right, let's jump right into it. First thing we're going to do is find our SVGs that we're going to use. So let's start out by finding the flag. We'll search US flag SVG. Go to images. We're going to find a good one. This one here on uh, Wikipedia it looks like a good quality one, but when I try to use it, the stars don't show up. So the one I use is right here. And it's on this website, Super Coloring. It may show up red. Sometimes it shows up black. I know it looks really low quality here, but this is actually a really good quality image. So we'll open it up again. We're on supercoloring.com and you're going to have your image. There's different colors, but I just stick with the black one and you want to click free download. Go ahead and save that. Now we're going to find the Eagle Globe and Anchor. For that, we'll search Marine Corps SVG. Again, there's going to be quite a few of them. There's another one on uh, Wikipedia. There's a bunch on Pinterest and Etsy. But we're just going to come down. Right here. Commons Wikimedia. We'll click that. Open this up. <clears throat> open it in the media viewer. Click this little arrow and we'll download the original, which is an SVG. Yeah, and we'll just save that. Go ahead and minimize that. We're gonna open up Carbide Create. When you come in, you're gonna have a blank canvas. We'll set our dimensions, and I already know that we're going to set our width at 21.38, our height at 11.25, and I do this just because I use regular off-the-shelf uh, 1x12s that I can get from Lowe's and Home Depot, and a, uh, the width of a 1x12 is going to be 11 and a quarter inches. <laughs> The thickness is approximately 0.7. This is not really important. We're going to set our zero point in the lower. We'll ungroup it for a minute. And it's got this little bubble. So I'm just going to get that out of there. Now, a good thing to do is save often. Carbide create can be a little buggy sometimes. So we've got it saved. I'm going to regroup this image together. And then what I'm going to do is put an outline around it. So I'll select this offset path 
And let's do 0.2 inches on the outside. And that's just going to give us a nice border. And you'll see why that's important later on. Now it adds a couple little extra pieces, which we need to go in and delete, because we don't want to be machining those. So we'll just delete all of these. You need to see where they are, just click your regular image, and they'll pop up as the black lines. Looks like we got one more, and that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take both of these and group them together and I'm just going to move it to the side here right. now we're going to bring in our flag image and it's just a little bit bigger than the canvas that we're working on I'll group that together and let's bring that down to 11.25. That'll automatically change the width. Now I'm going to make sure snap to grid is on. I'm going to grab this node here. I'm going to drag it to the corner. And that's just going to lock that right into our workspace. So now we're not going to worry about the symbol that we're putting on. I'm just going to worry about the flag for now. What I like to do is put a little border around my stripes. And what that does is gives me an area. If I want to fill something in with epoxy, it'll hold that in and it'll be sealed on the edges. I also just think it looks kind of cool. So let's just put a quarter inch border around. We're going to go to the rectangle. And these aren't really important dimensions. What's important is the width. Uh, you keep it the same on both sides. So we'll just go a quarter inch, hit apply, and we'll just move that over so it's up against that edge. Do another one on this side. Again, we'll make this a quarter inch. And I'm just going to move it over to that edge. Now, you can see when I click this, it's just selecting everything. And what I want to do is turn each of these stripes, which would actually be the white stripes, into their own uh, area. So I'm going to select this, select that box and let's see what happens when we hit booing subtract all right so now you can see it's changed this side of the image we're going to do it again over here we'll select all of those select the box go to boolean subtract and now we don't have complete boxes but what we've got is a bunch of nodes that we can connect to. And this definitely isn't the only way to do it. I'm sure it's not the best way to do it. This is just the way that I do it. So I start by clicking on these nodes. And just start drawing those stripes. And like I said, I'm trying to make the white stripes into their own individual box.
All right, now we can go ahead and get rid of everything else. Now when we click this, you can see it's a completed toolpath. Each one of them is. What I usually do is I save a master copy like this because I'll put different symbols on here. You know, today we're doing the Marine Corps EGA, um, but I do all sorts of different ones. So let's save that. Now we can go back to this, and what we need to do is ungroup it, select this outline that we made, and I'm just going to copy it a bunch of times. And then once I copy it, I'm going to move it so that it perfectly overlaps the original. Now I'm going to come and select everything here and move it over the flag. I'll turn snap to grid off and I'm just going to get it so it's roughly centered from side to side and on the top to bottom. Now, the reason we made so many copies of this outline is I want to subtract them from my stripes so that I have an enclosed area around the logo. Um, again, you can fill it with epoxy. It kind of looks visually pleasing, I think. Um, but every time you do that, it's going to delete this outline. So what we're going to do is click our line, and then we'll hit, uh, I'm on a Mac, so I'm hitting Command, and I'm clicking the line. And we're going to go to Boolean Subtraction. And when we click that, you can see that now this area here is one complete box, and this one is a complete box, and it does not come into our logo. We'll do this for all of them using Boolean Subtract. You're just going to want to select the line, select the outline, and hit Boolean Subtract. So I just made a bunch of copies of this. I didn't really pay attention to how many I was making, but we're going to go ahead and delete all of the extra ones that didn't already get deleted. All right, and that's what our picture is going to look like. Again, we'll go ahead and save it. And like I said, it's important to make sure that all of these turn orange. That means they're a complete object, and that's going to let you machine them. So we're going to go to Toolpath, and let's start by doing the stripes. I'm going to select all the stripes. I'm going to select these little areas here. Now, some of these are probably going to be too small for the bit that I'm going to use to cut, and that's okay. We're going to go to Contour, and we are going to select one of the factory loaded bits. 
which is number 102, and that's an eighth inch end mill. Um, I change my feeds and speeds a little bit. So we're going to go in and unclick that. Depth per pass, I leave. Uh, the step over, I'm going to change to uh, 0 0.04. And that's just going to make our make it have more tool paths and leave less lines. I'm also going to change the feed rate to 40. Now, for some reason, uh, I've noticed that it doesn't always change everything. So, like, our uh, step over didn't actually change. So... Let's go back in, change that to 0 0.04, and our feed rate is still 40. Hit OK. Um, for depth, I've done them at 0.1. I've noticed they still look really nice at 0 0.075, and it just machines a little bit faster. And we're going to want to put that on pocket. And we'll name that as stripes. Now the next thing that we're going to want to do is, we'll, I just go back to the design because that'll let me click this whole uh, image here. And we're going to v-carve this. So we'll click v-carve. And I've put in my own quarter inch bit, which I've called a number 204. But it's basically okay, it's a 60 degree V. I've hit uh, type is V mill, tool number is not important, uh, diameter is a quarter inch. Flute length is 1 inch, angles per side is 30, and number of flutes is 2. For our depth of pass, it's set at 0.035. Step over is not really important for what we're doing. Uh, feed rate is 23.1, and I've noticed that it cuts nice at that, fle at that feed rate. Plunge rate is 11.55. Again, this just seems to work good. So we'll click OK. And we'll name this. And we'll select the stars. And we're also going to V carve the stars. So we selected that 204 bit again. Let's double check this here. Yeah. We need to make sure that we select the 204. And again, that's just what I called mine. So it's just a 60 degree V bit that I'm using. All right. And now it looks like we've got everything done. It's calculating. Go to show simulation. We can turn our tool paths off. And that's how it's going to look. Now I do these in two operations. I do the 1 8 inch end mill, and then I'll run another program where I've saved the stars and the EGA, and I just run that. As two separate operations, so it's two different bits. Um, I don't mess with trying to do tool changes in between. Again, this just has worked out well for me. All right, thanks for sticking around to the end. I know that was kind of a long video and we went over a lot of stuff. 
I'm sure you guys have questions. Uh, please leave a comment with the question you have and I'll try to answer it as soon as I can. Please like and follow my channel and keep looking for videos like this. And again, thanks for watching.